hey rd fam what's up welcome back to another video if you guys are new here don't forget to like and subscribe and turn on your post notifications so you never miss a video let's get into this amazing recipe so now we're gonna be starting with our cabbage you guys know i like to prep off all of my ingredients first so i'm just taking my whole cabbage here and i'm just going to chop it in half first and then i turn it down and i chop it in three and you want to make sure that you're not chopping it up too um too thin but not too thick because remember um depending on the size of the pot that you're using it's going to be a little bit more difficult to flip it over but it's all up to you if you want the bigger chunks of cabbage that's perfectly fine and like i said i just turn it afterwards and i just chop it down into three making sure if there's any hard um little core pieces to the bottom of the middle section i'm just taking those out and this is my cabbage hair make sure you guys wash that off and just set it aside now i use the uh, turkey kibasa sausage and you can use whatever type of sausage that works for you um, you can use Cajun sausage if you like. You can use whatever brand that you like. Um, this was just the one that they had at the store, so it's the one that I decided to use. And I'm just chopping that up really nicely. Not too thick, not too thin. And I'm going to go ahead and I'm using one yellow onion. And doing the same thing with everything, just chopping it up. I'm not going to be dicing anything really small i like to have like the bigger sizes in my fried cabbage and i also used one red bell pepper and an orange um uh, the color honestly does not matter uh, you can just use whatever you have available in your fridge or available at the store that you're at now for my mac and cheese i'm going to go ahead and start boiling my pasta i use the corkscrews and i just boil them in some chicken stock now I'm going to go ahead and prep those potatoes for our candy dance. And I'm just peeling off all of the skin here. And you guys can use a, um, a peeler if you're not too comfortable with the knife. But I'm an island girl, so we do everything in our hands. And I'm just going to chop those up into some slices here. Um, I don't like mine to be too thick, but I don't like them to be too thin either. This um, Kenny Yam recipe is super, super, super easy. Literally, we're just going to assemble it inside of our pot here. So I'm using three tablespoons of butter to start with to the bottom and now i'm gonna go ahead and use one fourth cup of sugar brown sugar make sure that you um measure it properly inside of the cup and press it down and i'm gonna go ahead and add in my cinnamon you can add in however much you like i like it to be really like you know like sweet and cinnamony so um i add in a good amount i want to say I, I probably overall add in about three teaspoons of cinnamon and about i love nutmeg so about a teaspoon of nutmeg which is a bit excessive i know but that's how i like it and i'm just layering on those potatoes uh, like so next up i'm gonna go ahead and add on um another set of butter and then another one fourth cup of um brown sugar as well make sure that it's packed like i said and just sprinkle the sugar over that and literally put some more potatoes on all you have to do with this is literally just put the lid on put it on the stove because i like my candied yams on the stove it's candied you can't get candied yams if you don't put it in on the stove like if you try to bake it i don't like how it comes out i feel like it's really watery and i'm just not down for it so i just put it on top of the stove i'm literally just gonna put the lid on and I'm going to put that on the stove on low and just leave it cook. Literally. I don't move it. I don't mix it. I don't do anything, anything of that sort. I just let it cook. And I also forgot to add that I put in about one fourth cup of water in there as well. Now my pasta was cooked to al dente. And I'm just rinsing that off with some cool water just to stop the cooking process. I know most people say, oh, you're rinsing off all the chicken stock. Negative. It already boiled into the pasta. Let's be real. 
Next up, I'm making the cheese sauce hair for my mac and cheese, and I'm gonna go ahead and use one and a half sticks of butter. And I'm, I'm gonna go ahead and add in one fourth cup of flour to that melted butter. And I'm just gonna mix that up really, really well and let the flour cook off for a little bit. And at this point right here, I'm gonna be using a whisk just to make sure that I break up all of the clumps of that flour that's in there. Because you don't want to have any clumps because once you start to add in the cheese and stuff, it's not going to come out. And I also added in that flour in two parts if that works for you. I wanted to do it a little bit slower, but if you want to do it a bit faster, that works as well. Now, once everything was cooked off a bit, I'm going in with one quart of half and half. So I pour about half of it first, and then I give it a nice little whisk, and then I pour in everything else. And you just wanna make sure that everything is just well mixed and nice and incorporated. And once you pour, you're finished pouring in the whole entire bottle, you're just gonna let that sit um, on like a little don't let it get up to a boil but just let it like build up to like almost like a little simmer right now my stove is on top of medium heat right here and you'll start to see it start to thicken that's when you know you're ready for the cheese so for the cheese I'm using one block of the medium cheddar and I also used one block of the mozzarella cheddar. The mozzarella cheddar. Oh my god, you guys. I cannot talk. The mozzarella cheese. And I also used one block of the sharp cheddar. And I'm just taking my time. I'm just mixing all of that in together. Um, you guys can buy the cheese that's already shredded. I just feel like the ones that you grate in the, with the block, they melt a lot better than the ones that are already shredded for some strange reason. I don't know if it's just, you know, like, I don't know. Honestly, I really don't know. So once all of that cheese is melted in and your sauce looks like this, keep in mind you want to keep this on right now. You want to have it on a low heat and you want to be continuously stirring it because you don't want the bottom to start to get brown. Because once you scrape that, it's going to get up all inside of your cheese mixture. For the seasonings, you guys know I like to keep it simple when it comes to my mac and cheese. Onion powder, garlic powder, paprika, um, some black pepper, and a bit of adobo. That is it, literally one teaspoon of each. I don't like overly seasoned mac and cheese. That's just not my vibe. But if you are one of the people that like to have more flavors in there, you can go ahead and add in whatever seasonings that you like. Just keep in mind, taste with every um, added seasoning that you put in, especially if the seasonings have a lot of sodium in them, because remember cheese is salty. So you don't want to add too much salt because then you're just going to make salty mac and cheese and nobody's gonna like that and this recipe is perfect um for potlucks because potluck season is a has arrived you guys and i know that and i'm gonna be putting out some more recipes for you guys for that so now i just whisked up two eggs and i'm just adding that to the pasta this just helps to keep um the mac and cheese together and just makes it a bit more you know like stiff and I'm just gonna pour the, that cheese sauce that we just made all over the pasta. And I just used my little wooden spoon and I'm just gonna make sure that I mix that up really nicely, making sure that all of the pasta is coated. And I'm gonna go ahead and I add in about two more handfuls of that medium cheddar and um, sharp cheddar mix and give that a nice mix now what i like to do at this point after i mix it up i just like to let it sit for um a minute while i get the pan together because i feel like once it sits it starts to thicken a lot more so i'm just gonna take my pan i'm gonna spray it with some pam 
I clean the counter as well at this time. And then I'm just taking my pot with my mac and cheese. And I'm just going to pour all of that into the pan here. And I don't know if you guys can see it, but you can see that the sauce got a lot thicker here. Now I'm just going to spread that out and I'm going back in with that medium cheddar and sharp cheddar blend. And I'm just going to spread that all over evenly. Try to get it in every single crack. And then I'm going to take my mozzarella cheese and do the same thing and just fill in all of the gaps that are in there as well. Try to not have like any clumps because with the block cheese when you grate it, it tends to like clump up a bit more. So just try to break up, try to break up all of those clumps and stuff. And here I am with the mozzarella, just doing the same thing. If you do get anything on top of like the edges, because I have like the little handle parts here for my um my my pan you guys i cannot talk it's like four o'clock in the morning while i'm doing this so you guys need to tell me thank you because i stayed up all night just to put this um recipe video out for you guys and now i just top it off with some smoked paprika you can use regular paprika as well and here's a little trick i spray the top of my foil with some pan spray so the cheese does not stick to the foil thank me later and I just wrap that up really, really tightly. And I place it in the oven at 350 degrees for about 30 minutes covered and another 30 minutes uncovered. Now, this was for the cornbread. I usually make my cornbread from scratch, but I had a couple of people ask me how I can, if I can doctor um, some box mix. So I was just trying to show you guys exactly what i do if i do have to use box mix at some point um i just follow the instructions that are on the back of the box but instead of using oil or water i would replace that with buttermilk and i would replace the oil with butter literally just that simple and with my cornbread i always add in about one fourth cup of honey because i love honey cornbread all right, so I sprayed out my pan right here. I was using a square pan and I'm just scooping everything out and I'm gonna take that same spatula that I just used and just make sure that everything is evenly distributed in the pan. And I tap it as well on the counter just to get all of the bubbles out of, the, out of it right there. Um, then just follow the instructions to the back of the box um on how long to bake it for and at what temperature they recommend um in my oven i usually just bake everything at 350 and i check it probably i want to say every 15 minutes or so now going on to the cabbage here sorry my camera was not focusing i took half a stick of butter and i'm just melting that up inside of my skillet here And once that's fully melted, I'm going to go ahead and take that sausage that we chopped up earlier, our nice turkey sausage. Like I said, you can use whatever sausage you want to use. Just follow these same exact steps. And I'm just making sure that everything is evenly placed on top of the pan because you want to get a nice little stare on each of the sides. For as, for as far as how long I stared it on each side, I want to say probably like two to three minutes on each side. It wasn't anything crazy. I just wanted it to have like a nice like blackened look to it. So I'm just taking a fork here and just flipping them over. Alrighty, so once I flipped them over and they were nicely cooked on each side, I just moved it over and I added some bacon into the pan 
with the bacon you want to make sure that you're getting it as crispy as possible like i'm not i can't stress that enough because once you start to add in all of the liquids and stuff if the bacon is not too crispy it's just gonna get all soggy and you know like i like a nice crispy bite inside of mine so i'm just gonna fry everything up a little bit more just to make sure that everything is nice and crispy like i said and once everything is done i just take my spoon and i'm just taking the sausage and the bacon out making sure that i'm trying to shake off as much grease as possible because we want all of that so i literally just tap the spoon on the side of the pan just to get everything to drip out a bit more and i'm just putting it in a regular bowl i'm just gonna set that off to the side not too far so once everything is out, I'm going to go ahead and take those veggies that we chopped up earlier, the bell pepper and the onion, and we're going to add that to the pan. Right now my pan is on a medium to high heat right here, and we're just going to cook down all of those vegetables until everything is nice and soft. I also added, I want to say about a teaspoon of garlic. Alrighty. So once everything looks nice and softened, I'm going to go ahead and add in my washed cabbage to that and take your time adding it to the pot. I got a little messy, so I had to put in some off of the side. My stove top was clean, I promise. And I'm just going to try to kind of mix it a little bit. This is why I highly recommend using a bigger pot than you think you need. Now, once I try to mix everything up, I'm gonna go ahead with some chicken stock here. And I'm just gonna pour that inside. I think I forgot to get the footage of that but i poured about one fourth cup of chicken stock in there <laughs> sorry you guys and i'm just gonna go ahead with my seasonings here i didn't use anything like too crazy i love allspice inside of my fried cabbage um you should i get mine from walmart um it's not like the actual like the little tiny like ball ones i literally have like a seasoning that's like mixed spice and it's just like cloves and like nutmeg and all of those other like brown spices. And I'm going to go ahead and also add in some onion powder, some garlic powder, black pepper, smoked paprika. Um, I also added some Creole seasoning. I added some cayenne pepper as well because I do like my cabbage to have like a little bit of a bite to it. And I also added in some complete seasoning. And I just take my time and try to mix that up as good as possible. Um, like I always say, you don't want to add too much seasoning at first because remember, you it's always easier to add more than it is to take out. So just really take your time with this part. Let it cook off. And once it's, you know, like cooked off a bit, you can always taste it and you can add more seasonings if you do feel like you need to. So after this, I basically just put the lid on this i decided to add some more um complete seasoning right here and i mixed it up and i put the lid on for about five minutes and once i took that off i just added back in um the sausage and bacon and mix that up really nice just making sure that i'm getting the bacon and the sausage all in there all literally like you guys this was so good <laughs> i think this is probably like the star of like the whole entire plate i love fried cabbage so much and i made like a good amount so that i would have enough for like the rest of the week it was really 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 that good now after this i literally just let it cook on like medium for about two more minutes and then i shut it off and just put it to the side and this was the finished product
Mm-mm-mm. Look at that. Look at that. Like, I could smell it through the phone right now. Why is it 4 o'clock and I already want fried, ca fried cabbage again? <sighs> okay. All right. Now, our cornbread was finished. Now, I'm just going to take the honey... And I'm going to just cover that whole entire thing with honey right out of the oven. I'm just making sure that I'm getting that everywhere in every single crack. And I'm just going to take my little spatula and just spread it all over. And for me, I just feel like it, it, it spreads best when you put it on while it, the cornbread is right out of the oven and it creates like this really nice like sticky layer on top of the cornbread i can't explain it but it's so good like literally all right so once you have all of that spread you just toss this to the side honestly it's all done you're not going to need to do anything else to it unless you want to add more honey but that's about it now our mac and cheese was finished for the first 30 minutes i'm just gonna go ahead and take off the foil off of that and this is how it looked and i'm just gonna go ahead and pop it back in for another 30 minutes now for my rack of lamb you guys okay look at me making lamb okay <laughs> I'm just patting it dry, just making sure that I'm getting everything off of it. If there was like any excess fat or whatever, I just trimmed it off really quick. And I sped this part up. Um, I'm just cutting them off really quick. Um, take your time here because sometimes the bones are like slanted a bit. So you just want to try to just look at what you're doing and just making sure that you're going along with it. All right, so once I was done chopping all of that up, I just laid it down on top of my cutting board. I'm gonna go ahead and hit it with a bit of olive oil as the binder. And I'm gonna go ahead and season it up with my regular seasonings. I didn't use anything spectacular. The only thing that I added that was probably out of my normal regular seasonings was just a little tiny touch of clove powder just spread out all of those seasonings i'm gonna add the seasonings in the description box as well but it was just the basic things you know onion powder garlic powder black pepper smoked paprika Oh, and I also added in some cumin on there as well because I love the way that cumin pairs with uh, lamb. It goes so great. And I'm just taking my fingers and I'm just going to rub that in. I repeat the same thing on the next side and I just, I'm just i just picking it up really quick and just, you know, like making sure that I massage the meat and just get everything in there. All right, so once this portion was done, I started to heat up my cast iron. And I poured a bit of olive oil in there. And I'm just going to sear these on each side for about four minutes. And the heat on my pan was about medium to high right now. Now our mac and cheese was finished. You guys, I cannot stress this enough. Do not dig into the mac and cheese right out of the oven. Just let it rest. It's going to need about 15 to 20 minutes to rest. Don't touch it. Put it somewhere that it's not going to be bothering you. Please just let it rest. Go ahead and flip your lamb chops over. And once they're done on that next side... Put it in a pan and let them rest. Put it right next to the mac and cheese. It's not going to bother you and you don't bother it. Now for the last and final part, we're going to go ahead and work on that glaze for the lamb chops. This was another favorite of mine. I just put in about half a stick of butter, a teaspoon of garlic, 
um um i want to say about a tablespoon of soy sauce and then i went in with about one fourth cup of honey And I also used about one fourth cup of barbecue sauce. You can use whatever barbecue sauce is your favorite. For this video, I think I ended up using stubs, if I'm not mistaken. And I'm just taking a spoon, I'm just gonna mix that up. And on a medium to high heat, I'm just gonna let it cook off till it gets thick like this. This is the consistency that you're looking for. Almost thick enough to coat the back of the spoon. And then you are done. We're gonna go ahead and plate this up really quick. I got my yummy cornbread. I added a bit more honey on top of that because you know, like, you can't have cornbread without honey. And I want extra honey on my stuff. Don't forget the mac and cheese and then our fried cabbage. This was definitely the star of the whole show for me. And we can't forget about our candied yams. Like I said, you guys, with the yams, I literally just left it on the stove on low. I want to say for about 20 minutes or so. And they were just perfect. Literally so perfect. I couldn't ask for better candied yams literally i'm putting up my lamb chops really really nice you know making it look a little presentable for you know tiktok and stuff you know everyone eats with their eyes and i'm just gonna take that same glaze so with my glaze um i made sure that i kept it on like a little like the lowest heat possible that i had on top of my stove if you have like a warm setting you can keep it on that as well because you don't want to turn it off completely because it's going to get really thick and then you're going to have to reheat it again and i'm just covering the lamb chops with that glaze look at that it's so sticky and juicy oh my god mm -mm. it is four o'clock in the morning once again why am i this hungry and voila that was it literally such a great plate honestly for i thought that this would probably take a bit longer but i spent probably like i want to say two and a half hours in the kitchen which is not bad compared to what i usually do but anyway you guys don't forget to like and subscribe if you guys have any questions comment down below and i will feel i will definitely answer for you guys if you guys are new here welcome to the gang i hope you guys stick around turn on your post notifications and bye thank you